Nitrous is cool, but getting bottles filled is a pain. So let's talk about how to make it easier and cheaper. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and ignore this giant behemoth that is the wife's new truck sitting in the garage taking up all the space where Project Country Club normally is. We will talk about this thing later, but needless to say we got rid of the yellow Jeep, now we've got a tan Gladiator. Kind of excited about it. That being said, today we are talking about filling nitrous bottles up and listen, I know it's a pain. It's a pain, you gotta find some place that'll fill it up, then you gotta go get overcharged per pound to get the bottle filled up. Then you run out, you have to go rinse and repeat, buy extra bottles, all this stuff. So why not just do it at home? Well, once again, big shout out to our sponsors, Nitrous Express, and we'll talk about their filling kit that they sent me to help facilitate filling up bottles. On top of it, we want to talk a little bit about how to get a bottle. It can be a pain. Before we do all that though, big shout out to all the new subscribers out there, all the new patrons, everybody that's doing comments, leaving posts, questions, answers, Thank you, and as always, hit that thumbs up button if you find any of this content helpful. That helps me out, which then helps you out because I give more information away as you guys like the information. It drives me, it spurns me along, so I want to thank everybody as always. So the big thing that we need to touch on though is getting a bottle. It's a hassle and it's going to be different everywhere. For one, whether or not you can get a bottle in your state, you'll have to look up your own laws and regulations on that front, but if you can, Generally, I'm going to say steer away from the big guys, the air gases, prax airs, things like that. Air gas, I dealt with them. They said that they would give me a bottle, but it was kind of a rigmarole that we had to, uh, they wanted to set me up as a business. They wanted to do a site inspection, and I'm just like, take my cash, give me a bottle, let me walk out. Some air gases might allow you to do that. Most are not going to, uh, you know, so they're going to say that there's going to be some liability or something. One of the other options that you have is to call around to welding supply stores. This is probably going to be hit and miss, a lot more miss than hit, but eventually you will probably find a welding supply store that either A, races themselves so they carry nitrous, or B, is willing to order in a bottle for you. It may not be the easiest way to get one, and it may be hard to get a bottle swapped out because you'll probably have to take the cylinder in, drop it off, have somebody else will come pick it up, exchange it, etc. Your final option, what I ended up doing, was I started looking more for the mom and pop gas suppliers out there, and I actually found one that that's what they, you know, that's what they do is they supply to a lot of the local welding shops, things like that. And so maybe call up your welding shop and see where they get their gas from if it's not one of the big ones like air gas. You might have better luck reaching out to them. In fact, I had luck with two local kind of regional gas distributors as opposed to looking at national gas distributors. And then I ended up going with the one that was cheapest, walked in, bought the bottle, filled, and then after that, it's an exchange. And in doing so, I'm saving, you know, you, let's just say you can save anywhere between 30 to 50% per pound by doing it yourself based on what your local guys are gonna sell you nitrous oxide for. So you might have to pay five, base, basically it's been $5 and up for a long time now. A lot of places are charging $6 per pound. It is a lot cheaper if you can find that distributor that is willing to do it. And then a lot of the times they have pre-filled cylinders on location, ready to go. So if you run out, you can drive over there, drop your cylinder off, roll out with a new one, a couple hundred bucks, you're good to go. So that being said, let's step over to my setup right now. We'll talk about the different parts that I have and some of the things that you're going to need in order to fill bottles up at your own uh, home. Okay, here we have our mother bottle, big, heavy, brutish thing. And I highly suggest secure your bottle some way. I've got a chain, goes to a couple hooks, and it's, it's just going to keep somebody from bumping into it and knocking it over. On top of it, I don't know if we can really tell. Let me scroll down here. I have a Nitrous Express bottle heater that is a 120 outlet style bottle heater. This allows me to heat up the mother bottle, which is important because it, essentially what we're doing, since we don't have a pump in this setup, we're going to try and maintain a higher temperature on the mother bottle, which will build pressure in the mother bottle, which will then push our nitrous over to our uh, bottle that we're wanting to fill. 
So on top of it, I've got, in fact, I've got one of Justin's two and a half bottles sitting in the fridge right now, cooling it off, which will lower the pressure in it. it makes it easier to move from one bottle to the other. Uh, Nitrous Express was nice enough to send me this really cool kit that comes with uh, some AN line for AN4 fitting, a ball valve, which makes it easier to open and close and regulate your, uh, your pounds on your new bottle, and then the fitting that connects up to the bottle up top. We'll look at that here in a second. So even with this base AN4 kit, you could end up going from a four to a six if you were filling a bottle with a six port on it for some reason. Uh, then on top of it, stay up here. It comes with a ring. And the purpose of this ring is for a bottle that does not have a siphon tube. I actually happen to have a, a siphon tube or a uh, dip tube as they call them in this bottle, which means from the uh, valve up top, there's a tube that runs all the way down to the bottom and we don't have to invert this bottle. If you were to get a bottle that did not have that, this would actually screw right on top, allow you to invert the bottle and keep that bottle on a more steady surface so it's not gonna flop around. Uh, next, we're gonna need a pair of gloves. I've got an extra set of welding gloves here. You've gotta realize that this stuff uh, boils at like negative 40 degrees uh, centigrade. So it is very, very cold. Uh, it is in a liquid form. It gases off, literally like boiling water, below freezing. So you don't wanna get this stuff on your skin. Wear gloves, wear PPE, be safe. And then last but not least, We've got a scale, and this is just a postage scale, but this one actually goes up to a couple hundred pounds, more than ample for what we're trying to do here. Has a nice little uh, readout display here, and the big thing is, is that you can do tear weight on this. So whenever we are filling a bottle, we're filling it for poundage because we're putting liquid into it. If you have a two and a half pound bottle, you're putting two and a half pounds of liquid nitrous oxide in it. And on most bottles, it should have a label that will show you the empty weight and the nitrous weight and the combined weight. So it should at least show you the combined weight when full. That is kind of the bare minimum that you're going to want to know whenever you're filling this up. So the Nitrous Express two and a half pound bottles are uh, six and a half pounds. I want to say it's a four pound bottle with the two and a half. So we'll be six and a half on the top side. We'll look at that here in a second. But there's two ways that you can go about it. If the bottle is empty, you can put your bottle on your scale, tear that, and basically you're zeroing the scale out with the bottle on there, and then you are filling it up to the weight for the capacity of the bottle. In this case, it would be two and a half pounds. Now, if you have a bottle that's not all the way empty and you're trying to fill that one up, you're going to want to go off of the label. And so we would, at that point in time, say we already had half a pound in there, we would see what the total weight is, zero the scale without anything on it, and then fill it up to the total weight. Okay, here we have the Nitrous Express, two and a half pound. I just pulled it out of the fridge. It's a good probably 35 to 40 degrees right now. Should be more than ample. This bottle's very full, so it's got a lot of pressure on it still, so it should push over. And you can see, fill by weight on this label on the side, stating that full at six and a half pounds, empty it's four, capacity's two and a half. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is hook up our outlet, tighten this down, Grab our wrench, tighten that down, and now we're going to tear it. Right now we're at 3.9 ounces, so we're just a bit under four as it said. So we hit this button, now we are reading zero, and what we'll do is go ahead and open up our bottle, verify that we haven't added any weight by shifting anything. We're back at zero. We're going to throw our gloves on. Open up our mother bottle, nice and slow. It's got a lot of pressure behind it. And then we will take our ball valve that's part of our kit and slowly crack this thing open watching our scale. It's gonna go quick on a two and a half pounder, be aware. And we push gas, now we're pushing liquid over. So we're at one pound, two ounces. 
and we might get to two pounds. And we'll shut her off there. So we were able to get two pounds, one ounce in here. Let's go ahead and close our valves off. And we'll crack open our bottle to let the pressure drain off of this section of tubing here. And as you can see, this is frosted over just from the escaping gases. That's why we wear gloves. Now, we take our bottle off, reset the zero on our scale. We can see we're at five pounds, 11 ounces. So we came five ounces short of getting this bottle filled up to its spec weight. And the main reason behind that is I didn't have my heater on that long, so the uh, mother bottle hasn't had a chance to warm up. Honestly, if you were to do this, I would say uh, hook your heater up, maybe even run two of them so you can get better heat across the bottle. Hook your heater up, give it about 30 minutes. I keep my thermal gun here so I can shoot the bottle, see where we're at. We're only at 64 degrees, which isn't much of an offset, but this uh, heating element puts out 130. It'll get that bottle warmed up even with one, but if you're in a hurry, go ahead and spring for two of these. I'll put links to both the bottle heater and the fill kit from Nitrous Express down in the description below. But for now, we're happy with being five ounces away from full on this bottle. And then one other thing I like to do is, let me move the camera here. One other thing I like to do is I've got a little whiteboard here that I keep track of how much I've transferred over. For, so for Justin, I just put in 111. And then at the end of this, I'll tally it up whenever this bottle gets empty. That way I can see how much I actually get out of this bottle. Uh, just kind of keep a track of what my expenses are uh, compared to what I'm getting out of it. Uh, it's just a little bit of the OCD in me that does stuff like that. But that's about as hard as it gets to uh, fill up your own bottle of nitrous. So quit overpaying. You know, they're going to want, what, two and a half? So they're going to want 20, 20 bucks for, for this bottle, maybe a little bit more. Honestly, this should only cost you seven to $10. So it will pay for itself very quick. So how easy is that? I mean, literally for a couple hundred bucks worth of parts and the initial investment on the bottle, expect to pay between four and $600 based on your distributor to buy the full bottle. Uh, you're going to end up saving. I guarantee you, Maybe on the first bottle, you're not going to save, but by the time you get through the second bottle, you're probably saving money. And if you're using as much as we're going to be using this summer, it's going to amount to big savings across the board. It's going to, you know, and the nice thing about it is, is I've got friends that are running nitrous. I can help them out and I can still cut them a discount. They're going to get it cheaper through me, but I can still make a couple bucks per pound. So, uh, you know, it's worth the legwork to go out there and find who you can get the bottle from, what their exchange policy is, and go ahead and get the proper tools and equipment. Now, Nitrous Express does make a pump. It's a little bit more expensive. It's a, I believe it's in the $1,500 range. It uses air to transfer over. If you're doing a lot of volume, that would be the way to go. But for your home garage or something like that, or you're just filling up yours and your buddy's bottles, this process works perfectly fine. I took my 10 pound bottle that was almost flat empty and I got about nine and a half in it. Uh, just by cooling it off in the fridge and uh, running one bottle heater on there. That's enough for multiple passes. I'm happy with that. If you were to actually put the bottle in the freezer and had maybe two heaters on your mother bottle, yeah, you could probably get all 10 pounds in there, no problem. So keep that in mind. On top of it, if you are using the 110 bottle heaters, don't forget to unplug those things. Don't leave your mother bottle uh, unattended whenever those heaters are on. Just be safe about it, be smart. It is a pressurized cylinder. It's gonna have a release on there. You're probably not gonna be able to overpressure that bottle, but just keep your, you know, keep your wits about you. Don't go to bed at night with that thing heated up because it could be uh, to the point where it might get too hot. So, that being said, let's do the wrap up here. Uh, you know, 
I'm so excited to have this opportunity. I want to thank Nitrous Express again for all their support on Project Country Club. There's a lot more that we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be hooking up a uh, pressure transducer on the bottle, bringing it back to the Holly Dash so we can actually see the bottle pressure on there. We're going to be hooking up the automatic bottle heater. We'll bring that back to the dash so we can turn it on and off. That way, whenever we're ready to go, we can flip a switch on the dash. It'll start heating the bottle up, and that thing sets itself to a certain pressure, but we'll also be able to monitor that pressure to make sure that we are getting consistent pressure because on nitrous, consistent pressure is consistent time when it comes to racing. I uh, want to thank all the new subscribers again. Listen, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, make sure and hit up the comments down below. Uh, if you know, let me know what your story has been. How lucky have you been at being able to go out and find your own mother bottle? What's some of the tactics that you use? Share that information for the other guys that are doing this stuff. You know, it, that's my whole mentality is the more information we share, the more everybody learns. So let's keep that up. Uh, check out the live show Thursday night, 8 Eastern on YouTube. Man, it's a good time. Uh, we gave away some Nitrous Express merch last week. I'm sure we will again in the future. I give away Goat Rope Garage merch packs, shirts, things like that. So don't miss your opportunity to win some free gear. Show up. You might, you'll might, you probably learn something, or you might be able to share some of the knowledge that you already have. That's the best part about it is, is it's a place where people once a week get together, talk about problems, talk about solutions, talk about performance, talk about tuning. It's awesome. So please, if you have the chance, 8 Eastern, Thursday nights, live show in tune with the garage. Uh, that's about all I got for this one. Stick around. Plenty more videos coming this way soon. You know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. ABT, always be tuning.